Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're trying to figure out the origin of the term tumbler pilled. Okay, yeah, I never heard it till you mentioned it. I don't even think it's a real thing. That's uh, very interesting. We're gonna talk about Kate Leth, who worked on High Guardian Spice, who's worked on Marvel Comics, and has made a lot of uh, interesting statements on Twitter over the years, mm -hmm. right? Uh, she is claiming now that, you know, 2014, 2015, a lot of stuff she said, she said because she was quote unquote, Tumblr pilled. Well, which, no, I, I think it's actually a thing. I, yeah, I want to talk about the bigger issue. Let, but I, I want to be clear, the purpose of the video is not to dunk on Kate Leff specifically, but there was a period in time where a lot of people working in the animation and comic book industry, you know, current year, uh, did spend a shit ton of time on Tumblr and mm -hmm. Twitter. They were pulled from Tumblr and Twitter. Say, Mostly Tumblr. Yeah, saying some really dumb shit. So I'm trying to figure out uh, kind of where it came from, but this is the honestly the very first time I have ever heard the term Tumblr pill. But it makes sense. It does make sense. I wonder if we're gonna hear it more because I, I think a lot of these people who are working now professionally, maybe they weren't, she was working I think on web comics at the time. They they mostly were. Like Most a lot of them, of them were, them were, people, were yeah. you know, over there. And there's a reason why people are like, why do you pick on Tumblr people all the time? Well, until Tumblr took porn off and everybody ran to Twitter. Tumblr was ground zero for the shit. The stuff you're seeing on Twitter now was Tumblr first. Yeah, um, basically current year Twitter is what Tumblr was five or six years yes. ago, which is why we didn't spend a lot of time on Tumblr. No. But most of the people working as showrunners now, working as writers in the animation industry, uh, people pushing into independent comics, a lot of them came from that scene. And apparently they don't like it when stuff they said in the past bites them in the ass. So we'll, we'll talk about that because I want to get into it. There, there was a you know a post on Reddit too where they talked about you know all the toxicity coming from Tumblr. That there crept was a into... lot of toxicity in Tumblr. Yeah, there was. And Tumblr's... now it's on Twitter. So if it was toxic on Tumblr, it's toxic on Twitter. So before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, videos, and rants, guys. Over 239,000 subs. Uh, thank you so much for the support. Greatly appreciated. We do talk about the animation industry, talk about comics. Uh, we've talked about High Guardian Spice before, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, you know, we gave a review, and we really aren't going to talk much about the show. A lot of people are spending a lot of time nitpicking the show and picking apart all the. the I don't care enough about it. Yeah, all the places they 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 cut the budget. Obviously, oh yeah, there was it was obvious that yes, eh, whatever. It um, wasn't the best, but it wasn't like. It wasn't the worst thing ever either. It wasn't the worst thing ever. It's but it wasn't one I'd watch again. <laughs> Hell no. Uh, it was it a was, Crunchyroll show. It was, a, it was a thing. It was a Cartoon <laughs> Network show wasn't a crunch. Crunch. I agree with you. So this was interesting. Now, Kate Leth uh, has said a lot of uh, really interesting things in the past, like hashtag kill all men. See, I, people were saying about kill all men person. I didn't know who they were talking about. I didn't know she had done this. I was familiar with Noelle Stevenson going after men and call herself ginger hazing and going after guys that even weren't talking to her just to troll men. I knew about that, which is one of the reasons I actually used to follow her and I unfollowed her way before she even did She-Ra because I, I, didn't pre I didn't appreciate the way she was behaving. And back then she was hanging around with Kate Leth, wasn't she? Yes, they were. I don't know if they were. At least on Twitter, they were always back. If they were they back had forth. pictures together. They were hanging out. Yes. They were trying to get. I think they were both trying to get into animation at about the same time. I don't know if they were a thing or anything like that, but um, they both came from the same scene, which was the Tumblr cartoonist and I honestly Same. think people thought that the more you, you had to scream loud about hating men, because remember, this is around the time we had the Ghostbusters, 2016 was starting to be announced. We, we had, you know, a lot of this whole, you know, diversity is women, diversity yeah. is lesbians thing going on then. Um, that was about, that was a little bit after I got interviewed and um, but with a bunch of other women. And I was the only one that had professional credit in comic books. And I was the only one they didn't put in the interview mm. because I said that I didn't think all women were being kept down. And yeah. that wasn't the narrative. That was the correct narrative, apparently. Yeah, and it was very interesting that you were the only one cut. And I was, and I was interview. the one who had who had professional credit. And other yeah. people did. Um, but anyway, so here's some of the things that she said. That was a 2013. 2012. Yeah, you know, it's around this time. That, yeah, I guess it was starting to go on. You can go, and again, she was a writer on High Guardian Spice, but it does seem like, look, I want to say the, the bigger thing here, and again, the, the purpose of the video is not to dunk on Kate Leth, right? Everybody says stupid shit. Uh, there is a difference, though, in how it's it's handled depending That's on who fair. you are. Yes. Some people can say stupid shit and get a pass. Other people can say stupid shit 
and uh, they get canceled immediately. Right. You know, um, but in this case, you know, she seems to acknowledge that she said some some stupid shit on Twitter. What I thought was really curious was just in the last you know day or two, you know, people called her out for some of the stuff she said. And she said, how dare you say kill all men? Well, hon, these tweets are eight years old, and I was Tumblr-pilled at the time. Well, okay, but here's the thing. How come she gets a pass because she was Tumblr-pilled when she said all this stuff, but other people have said things like that or longer ago, and they deserve to cancel and have their whole platform taken away and everything else? That's that's it. It's it's who you are, what you're saying, whatever. I mean, I'll give her that she admits that she shouldn't have said it. Yeah. You know, and she's like, she said, that was years ago. I should, yeah, I was Tumblr pill, but she, I mean, not that she's making excuses. And she probably was Tumblr pill. I think it isn't that legitimate thing, if I'm being honest. Um, and she's at least trying to reverse course on it. So I'll give her that. Yeah. So, you know, what's interesting though, is are we going to see more of these creators as they move into professional positions? And as I think the pendulum starts to swing. Oh, you mean they grow up and realize that. You could say that. I'm going to say they grew up because yeah. in the real world, you know, um, you actually have to deal with other people and they might sometimes have a penis. I'm like, Shocking, I know. And you can't say stuff like this and have it not bite you in the ass. Well, I think just in general, I, I'm really starting to wonder, just, you know, some of the decisions we've seen lately with studios, if the studios aren't getting tired of this shit. Like mm -hmm. we hire these these motor mouth activists to come in. They work on our show. They've got, you know, all the tweet history and oh my God, you know. Um, well, to be fair, she hasn't really. We we've said that before, but we haven't. She hasn't been out there doing this lately that I've seen. No, and look, I will I will give her. You know, I mean, she's like, hey, I block people I don't like, whatever, and that's she also her point. It's yeah. not all the you know, high ground space is not all her show, which is also true. We said that too. That yeah. they had her talking about it, but it wasn't just her. There were several people in this all diverse uh, writing team. Yeah, she said she was a writer, a staff writer. She had no power over designs, marketing, animation, or larger story arcs. Uh, I do my job. I write my scripts. I'm proud of the work I do, but I'm not the powers that be. Not on anything that's out there now anyway. I'm just grateful for the work. And yeah, she was a staff writer. People well, associated her closely with it, but... We knew that High Guardian Spice was done because yeah. she was out there looking for a job. That's how we knew. We're like, wait a minute. She's out there looking. Anybody have any openings? Yeah, so yeah. So we're like, yeah, so that means High Guardian Spice is over. I mean, at least what they had done, we knew it was done because she was out there looking for something else. But, you know, again, this kind of goes along with Noel Stevenson, too. Noel Stevenson, about the same time, was a major motor mouth on Twitter. I mean, before I think she got her, her book deals or whatever, definitely before she did uh, Shira, she was out there. Her brand was dunking on dudes on it Twitter was. just because she could. And it was part of that scene. Now yeah. that these people are moving into the professional. You're not seeing that behavior so much. Not as much. Um, and I have to wonder if, again, the studios are just tired of dealing with the fallout. Well, I, they do point out, and they're not wrong here, that she never said, she, I Tumblr pilled okay, but she never says, I shouldn't have said that. And they're right. She should say, you, you, Kate, you should say, I shouldn't have said it, because you really shouldn't have said it. I mean, in the real world, you're going to work with men and women. Making those comments probably was not a smart thing to do. I get the Tumblr pill thing. I get the indoctrination, and you you, you know, you think you're making a difference. And, and I, I'm seeing a lot of this shit. I call it Twitter pilled now with these activist kids who, you know, you can't say anything to because I'm underage and I'm not, I'm neurodiverse, you know? No, you're, you're still full of shit. Sorry. Um, you know, I get it to a point, but like they bring up, you don't say I'm sorry. Well, a lot of times, a lot of times, you know, in the case of Noel Stevenson, you know, she was younger, but a lot of the people that were behaving this way on Tumblr and Twitter were well into their twenties, thirties. Yeah. They should know better. Well, now it seems know. to go younger. Yeah, it's going younger now. Yeah. And, um, but you know, when you're saying it's funny, you know, you say kill all men and you're, you're working for a trans man, trans man was the, I know, right. Was the show. Well, that was before. Okay. She worked for the showrunner. Yes. Yeah. Now, now, Cause I, I would have questions. I mean, I gotta tell you, I mean, you know, again, people say dumb shit on social media all the time. But if somebody came to me and say, Hey, I want a job. Okay, cool. And, uh, being a man and I looked, I'm like, Hey, I see that you're, you're most notable, uh, for saying kill all men on social media. Does that mean me too? Cause Gotta tell you, I kind of like being here. I really mm -hmm. don't. Kind of like being here too, and I'm a woman. So. Yeah, I don't want to go anywhere. I think I'd like to think the kids like me too. Mm -hmm. The dog likes. I know the dog likes me. At least the dog likes me. But uh, yeah, I, I would be like, yeah, you know, I'm gonna have a really hard time hiring you because mm, apparently you don't like my kind of people. So mm -hmm. whatever. I'm just like, it's not smart to alienate half population just because you know you're trying to get yeah. some point across. Anyway, so I. 
you know, I've been do I, again, I'm trying to find the root of this Tumblr pill, and I, I, I don't know where it's coming from because the only other place I've seen it was on uh, some archives from like 4chan and talking about the cartoon. Yeah, stance. mostly in regards to cartoon and comic people is where you mostly hear it. So, I mean, it is it is sort of a, a, a different spin on red pilled or black pilled, you know, Tumblr pill, but it does imply that. Some of the people who were, you know, motor mouths on Tumblr and Twitter realizing that they were indoctrinated into. And we've said before, we've said that, that the, you know, Tumblr mindset, the Twitter mindset is very cult-like. It is very cult-like. You are basically in a cult. I'm sorry, but you kind of are. Because what happens is you think that this is how normal people are because all your friends, again, you get, you know, people that were in the webcomic scene back then and you're surrounded with other people that think that way, talk that way, act that way. And then you get into a, a more professional setting and you're like, oh yeah, not everybody appreciates my, my Twitter hot takes. No. Know? And then um, like a lot of them are so brainwashed thinking that something is a certain way because they've been told that it is, that they can't see the force of the trees. They can't see their own hypocrisy. Like for example, I was on Twitter and I was just curious because that uh, it was a Giancarlo Esposito from mm -hmm. uh, Mandalorian. Uh, I guess I made a, a call. They asked him who his favorite co-star was to work with on the Mandalorian. And he had said Gina Carano. And I was like, oh, I know it's coming. And I went and looked. And there are people like, you know, oh, I can't believe him. How dare he about, you know, Gina Carano and her being, you know, her, her making belittling the, the Holocaust or anything else and going about, you know, the pronouns. I checked this person's account and they said, call me what you want. But they didn't have their pronouns listed. So don't you know that clearly means they hate trans people themselves? Because they didn't list their pronouns. So that clearly means they hate, they hate trans people. And then they're going on about the Holocaust and it's like, and their argument about that was, but what she said wasn't factually untrue. That's actually historically accurate. Um, and if you're going to say you can't belittle the Holocaust, then why do you talk about Pedro Pascal and stuff making the comments they said? I'm like, it's either, either both are wrong or both are okay. You can't both ways. But my point is they could not see the hypocrisy by having a hissy fit about that. Mm. Why they themselves did not have pronouns in their bio. And then they're talking about, you know, misusing the Holocaust. They themselves were misusing that whole situation right then to belittle another person, to belittle this actor yeah. because he, he said something they didn't like. So they don't see the hypocrisy. They really can't see it. It's interesting. I, I found this post. Again, I'm, I'm going down the hole here, going down the rabbit hole, trying to, trying to figure out where Tumblr Pilled came from. And I think, I think Kate Leth might have just coined this. Herself, well, hey, because, we've coined things before ourselves, so hey, why not? And that's that that that's fine because I I think that it probably is an appropriate term. Um, but I found this post talking about this uh, video escaping cancel culture, and it said it seems to me like the Tumblr of the early to mid 2010s was the early version of today's Twitter. It's the only version of today's Twitter because everybody left there and went to Twitter. Yep. It's it's basically Twitter is where they went when they all fled Tumblr. Um, it, but this is a lot of what we've said. Uh, you know, your fave uh, is problematic era had a lot of the same uh, essentialist name calling hot takes camouflaged as criticism. Uh, on Tumblr now, most of that stuff seems to have died down, whereas on Twitter, it's growing. Does anyone have any idea about what happened to make Tumblr's culture evolve? I think they grew up and they mm -hmm. got jobs and or they got they burned themselves out. Did all of those people just move to Twitter? Yeah, a lot of them did. Yeah. Did people realize they were wasting their energy? I think some of them did. Is it something inherent in the different setups of the two platforms? Am I, I just imagine the setups it? have nothing to do with it. No. Uh, I think there might be something in the story of Tumblr we can apply to understanding and fighting current cancel culture. This, this is what we've talked about right here. The other thing I'm thinking about right now is the power of action to reduce the toxic behavior. When people feel powerless, they lash out to feel powerful. So... What is going on is a lot of these people, I think, feel like they don't have a voice and they're like, well, I can have a voice on social media. Not only that, but I can uh, take the voice of other people away because I, I don't, don't like, like them. them. Yeah, I don't like exactly. them. <laughs> you know, I don't so. like them. I don't think I don't think Chris Pratt should be allowed to voice character, you know, whatever. Or, or this person should be working in comics, or this other person. Or, you know, yeah, I don't like that you. The, I I'm am making all these assumptions about you based on something. You know, I don't know. I really know you. I can make assumptions about you, and then I want you canceled because you you're making me mad about something that you know you did or didn't do. You might not even have done it. And it's really interesting too because a lot of these people have an activist mindset, but it's misguided. And this is how people fall into cults. You know, yeah, it's, it's before. Very, we brought up cult. Yeah, are you in a cult? Here's the connections to abusive relationships and cults. Yeah, you want to feel like you belong. Yep. You want to feel like your life and you know has purpose, has meaning. Uh, but you, you want, can infect change, right? 
um, you want to feel like, yeah, you're you're here for the greater good. And, uh, you know, of course, you got to have a, if, if you're the good guy, then there has to be bad guys because mm-hmm. that's just the way it works because that's the way our, our monkey brains work. Like, well, I'm the good guy. So somebody else must be the bad guy. Um, but they said they kind of prey on the activism mindset. They said the more people engage in real movements, the more they'll realize how much they're losing by engaging in petty internet drama and how little positive impact social media posturing has compared to all the things you can do to make a genuine attempt I was to help people. This. You can take your energy instead of wasting it on things like, you know, Twitter and yelling at people and calling them names and, and it's blocking them anyway. You could always go out and actually join organizations that you feel uh, is something that you care about and go out there and actually physically help or if you can't go physically because of you know different things like you're worried about COVID or whatever there's other ways you can actually go out there and be part of something that's actually changing things all cancel culture is doing is making toxic a cesspool or, or toxic twitter a toxic cesspool and it, it's just you know it just makes you lose your point and makes you look bad yeah this person's like how do you get them to switch over to real activism so that they're even like they're not actually activists. We talked no. about this too. They're like armchair activists. They're want to be activists. Real activism is hard. You have, it is. You have to go out there and actually do something other than type, type, you know, calling people names and, and trying to get them canceled on the internet. Go try to look. Uh, you know, go to a soup kitchen. Uh, help the homeless. Go plant some trees. Go clean up your neighborhood. Go get you know some garbage bags. Pick up, pick up some trash. Do something in the real world. Just go work at a, a woman, a battered woman's shelter. Yeah, just yelling at people about fucking cartoon shows, you know, uh, and calling them names actually has the opposite effect. Cause what happens is you become a big joke and they're like, Oh my God, this person's just going to bitch and complain about everything and about everybody and try to get people canceled. We're never going to hire this person because they spent the last three years on Twitter and trying it follows to get people. You guys. It does. It does. Kate left. I mean, she said this stuff eight years ago. And uh, again, you know, I'm not advocating cancel culture. Uh, she not at all. She's allowed to say what she wants to say. She can say what she wants to say. But it also can, can bite work. you in the ass. Yeah. And if it does, it does. Um, you know, people in the Steven Universe fandom. Oh, yeah. That was awful. I thought this was interesting. They talked about how, and this was a couple of years ago, the Steven Universe fandom realized that it was the most toxic cartoon fan. Now, that was before She-Ra, mm-hmm. um, but Steven Universe but is still pretty toxic. bad. But here's what happens. The really, really toxic people in each fandom moves to the next. Yeah. It went from Steven Universe, then those people jumped to She-Ra, mm-hmm. and then those people jumped over to like, you know, what was like the Owl House or whatever. Owl House. Um, and, and so yeah. there's other ones. And now they're going to jump over to the next thing, whatever it may be. And and that's it. They don't actually leave. They just, I mean, there's the toxic shit's still there. It just skips to whatever's popular next because that's where they're going to get the most, you know, bang for their buck as far as screaming is concerned. And and the problem, you know, I had with the the Shira fandom anyway is that they they kind of deliberately courted, like they knew some of the people in Voltron and Steven Universe were really toxic, but it's almost like they deliberately marketed it, the show to those people. They right. wanted those people. Yeah, and then when those know, people, like, you know, got mad on. about Noel Stevenson making that joke, and it wasn't even her joke, she just repeated it. Yeah. I still can't believe she did that. But, you know, then they turned on her, and then it was like, oh, shit, you know? So this is it, it, it's, it is what it is. Yeah, um... You know, uh, this this poor artist that was harassed to, to yes. suicide. I mean, oh, my God. Um, I've seen this, guys. I've seen this, especially with cartoons. Well, we've seen it with art. You, you whitewashed this character. You made this character skin a shade too light. Or you made this character, you know look too skinny or whatever, you know, they're going to have a shit fit on Twitter. You've seen it. Mm-hmm. And they've actually told the artist to kill themselves because it's a bunch of children and they aren't physically children, they're acting like children, but they're mostly physically children. I'm sitting at a computer, literally bullying other people, and cyber bullying other people to try to get them to kill themselves because they didn't like the way they drew a cartoon, okay? You're telling people to kill themselves because you didn't draw a cartoon the way you liked it. And it worked. Uh, I, I do remember this. She worked on the show mm-hmm. and she was harassed and she took her social media down. I, I'm pretty sure the showrunner of... Al House took her social media down too because she was getting harassed. You well, know? here's the thing: if you truly, completely believed in you know stopping toxic behavior, in bullying being bad, in diversity and inclusion, in the whole goodness makes the badness go away, let's hug it out, hug your enemy, make them your friend narrative, you 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 cling to desperately, you clutch like your pearls, then you wouldn't you wouldn't be behaving this way. Like you would be treating people better than what you, you wouldn't be treating them as bad as, as you're treating them. You'd be treating them better because you wouldn't want to be what you hate. And you literally are what you hate. You are literally the biggest toxic bullshit bullies ever masquerading as the good guys, but you're not. 
No, this this keeps coming up too. Rebecca Sugar can't do anything right. Uh, Concrete, they said, was like a, a black uh, parody. That that was a character they didn't use. Um, there's a 12 year old kid. They got harassed. Um, this is uh, yeah, a young boy known as Grayson. Um, made a YouTube channel talking about Steven Universe and Pokemon. He was 12 years old, and people were attacking him. Our son got attacked back when yeah. he was much younger at the end of Steven Universe. Or not Steven Universe, uh, Adventure Time. He spent all summer watching Adventure Time all over again. Now, this kid watched it since it started, loved Adventure Time, watched the whole way through, watched it again. Um, gave a very fair analysis of the finale, which now has come, be, come to be accepted by a lot of people what he said was actually what they thought, too, now that we've had time to look back on it. And, oh, my God, how much shit did he take? Oh, yeah. It was horrible. I mean, he, he almost didn't want to do YouTube He almost again. never did YouTube again. So what, what's going on here, especially when we, we talk about cartoons, we try to talk about cartoons from, you know, the business side of things, you know. And we talk about it. It brings these kinds of people out of the woodwork. Uh, we get we get threats from these people. We get crazy ass emails because I think they've been successful before. They think they're they want to bully you into shutting up. Yeah, but the difference is is we're like actual adults with like actual business and actual lawyers and actual you know whatever. And it's like it doesn't work on us. Uh, that shit just goes to the police. Um, but good luck with that. But yeah, they bully each other. You mm -hmm. know, and um, some people they get rattled by it. I mean, we really don't too much. I I, I do get pissed off because I because what happens usually with these people is they they just keep talking, and you just like let them keep talking. We don't even sit there and listen to them. They'll, they'll out themselves, and you yeah. find out like, oh, this person I thought was some whatever is like some freaking art school reject or whatever mm -hmm. that spends all day bitching about it. A lot of at the heart us. of a lot of it, it turns out to be a jealousy issue, jealousy issue. And that's what they're saying here. They, they said that a lot of these people, I think if you look, I mean, not to give a pass to anybody who says shit like this or does shit like this, but if you look into their lives, it could be that they're just like, I really wanted, you know, I, I want to work in the industry. I don't feel I like don't I feel can. I don't feel you deserve it. I do. Yeah. Things like that. Yeah. It's just, it's, I don't know. Or they just want to, they really just want someone to listen um, they want to, you know, they want to just, some people just want to be, you know, make other people hurt just because they are hurt. I don't yeah. know. But it's a very, very, very bad thing. And it used to be in the day, if you said something, you had to say some people's faces. And, and if those people were confronted in the face, they wouldn't say the things they say. But it's a lot easier to say whatever the hell you want when you're on a keyboard. Yeah, it is. And you're hiding behind. Oh, hate versus criticism. Something I always say. Yep. You yep. know, there's a difference between negativity and, 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 you know, something being, something being negative and something being like, you know, criticism. So I, I do wonder though, you know, again, um, you know, people say dumb shit, uh, and I'm not trying to, you know, dogpile on Kate Leth or whatever you can think about or whatever really, you want to. You really should apologize for some of those comments. Probably should. Just, I mean, look, I guess my thing is like, if you're going to play by the rules of cancel culture, you at least have to give an apology. But beyond that, um, I think we're going to see more people as they themselves get into the industry, as they mature, as they realize that there's life beyond Tumblr and Twitter. Uh, I think we're going to have them look back on their own behavior and be like, yeah, shit. That well, you was, know what? Some of these people that like Kate Lev, who participated in this behavior, they were, you know, Tumblr pilled, as she says. Mm. Maybe they should take some of what their experiences are and maybe they should make an effort to try to educate the people that are behaving so badly now to maybe avoid it. You know, yeah. work with these people so that, you know, they it, it, it prevent it from happening in the first place. So it doesn't continue, you know, use your, use your, you know, your newfound enlightenment for that. Yeah. Um, and I think, I, you know, I think people would respect these creators a lot more. Now I said, now I guess Ray Rodriguez is, is kind of going off on Twitter now. Um, you know, against, uh, yeah, I love this. Oh, yeah, Kate West said, yeah, funny how people who spam my contact form with demands for accountability because I worked on a cartoon always use burner emails. Yes, yes. actually, Kate, we do, we understand that very well. Uh, we were getting them almost daily. Yeah, we, we, we feel you on that one there. We feel you on that one. Um, but, uh, you know, Ray Rodriguez for the longest time until the show came out and people started, you know, dunking on it or whatever, uh, hadn't really said much. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'll, I'll give you props for that. I'm not saying you have to, like, sit back and, and, you know, take the abuse or whatever, but because it would be hard. I mean, it would be. You've got people, you know, shitting on your stuff. It is hard. Day in, day out. Um, you know. But, uh, you know, I, I don't think engaging in a bad faith argument is going to, it's definitely not going to help you get your next your next gig and i think mm -hmm. i think some of these people are starting to realize that like shit i'm i'm literally burning my own bridges here like i was given the chance to work in the industry 
and I just ran at the mouth on Twitter and now nobody wants to work with me. Yeah. You know, um, so I don't know. Anyway, interesting. Tumblr pilled, probably going to become a thing. Mm -hmm. Hopefully more people realize that they were Tumblr pilled. They were Twitter pilled. They were getting wrapped up in this cancel culture and this, this uh, toxic cartoon shipping bullshit. And uh, they moved on to the real world, uh, moved on with life. We'll see an end to it. Maybe, hopefully. God willing. Going to wrap it up. Yeah. Uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk to you later. Bye.